22 years ago, we started Crash Course. A group of very good instructors bring their talents into one group, and that's what we've done for 22 years now. Uh, when we first started, we started with about a dozen cars, and uh, now we're up to 225 students. We have over 200 cars. We are the number one vehicle rescue school in the United States, no question about it. The students come from Europe, they come from Mexico, uh, we got people from the state of Washington to New York. Well, we really have put a great deal of time and effort into the design of the curriculum here at Crash Course. The 225 or so students that run through, they're going to go through 10 scenario-based extrication, all hands-on pits. What's neat about the stations are they're all different. There's from cars underneath semis to cars on top of Jersey barriers. And they're going to get a great deal of hands-on tool time. So when they leave here, they're going to have a much, much better in-depth understanding of vehicle rescue. And uh, our intention is that they go home and share that knowledge with the rest of their fire departments. There's so much knowledge here. And the whole idea is you can take it back and teach the rest of the department. I will be lead instructor for a pit entitled New Techniques and Displacement. I'll have two assistant instructors with me and typically what we're going to do over this two day weekend is we're going to hopefully show them some new techniques in extrication. It goes from basic vehicle extrication, how you use tools, to advanced and then into actually the new cars today. So it's, it's a very well balanced program. Whether or not they're a brand new to extrication type student or very seasoned veteran, we feel that we can offer a great deal of education to both of those people and everyone in between. This is our first year actually having somebody come in and help us, such as General Motors bringing a Chevy Volt into the program. We've put a little bit different spin on it this year. Uh, how Rescue Systems in conjunction with General Motors, specifically the Chevy Volt, we've brought in a crashworthiness engineer from General Motors who was kind enough to bring a Chevy Volt for us. And what we're going to do this year is we're going to actually offer the student the opportunity to look at the Volt up close and personal. Now the Chevrolet Volt is what we refer to as an E-Rev, or an extended range electric vehicle. It's not a hybrid, and that's what really people get confused about. A hybrid runs on gasoline and electricity in conjunction with each other, depending on the, the driving habits, what you're doing at the time, where the Volt operates on electricity all the time. It has a gasoline engine that is a generator, and all it is is it's in there to charge the battery so you can continue to drive on electricity. General Motors understood that there was a need because the Volt is a very unique vehicle. It is the only one being manufactured by any of the uh, auto manufacturers today that is an extended range electric vehicle. There are other hybrids, there's other electric vehicles that are out there, some that are coming, but it is currently the only extended range electric vehicle. Um, it runs on high voltage, and high voltage in this particular vehicle, the nominal voltage is 360 volts DC. Uh, it's lithium ion technology, so we have to protect that. Um, for obvious reasons, we don't want the vehicle to violate the battery, if you will, in any kind of crash conditions, rollover, side impact, rear impact, front impact, um, whatever the condition may be. We just don't, we can't allow that to happen. So we have to have a lot of material in the car that is very high strength. The press hardened steel, or referred to as PHS, or Martin City steel, which is a very, very strong material, and that's really part of what brought us to, to crash course today. Um, we have to go in and learn how to do extrication slightly differently, but the biggest thing is having capable tools. Um, not all manufacturers have capable tools, or not all fire departments are carrying them, and that's the bigger thing, is the fire departments around the country, or around the world, is because the cars are going around the world, 
do not all carry tools that are capable of cutting the new materials in the new cars being produced today. We were asked to be involved in the Chevy Volt program for a couple of reasons. Number one is honestly the, the performance of the hydraulic rescue tool line, the Genesis line. Uh, number two, reputation of Genesis out there in the fire service. Uh, we really, really have put a great deal of uh, thought, effort into the engineering of these tools as well as overall reputation in the fire service. The fire service really is a very, very small, very tightly knit community and you have to prove to these guys that you really can back up what you say and we've done that with the Genesis tools. Once again, when you come up to an accident scene, you're not finding a car on its wheels, you're finding tops on its side. So there's so many different changes, the materials, the designs, the weight of the car. So a lot of things are changing. One of the things that we did as a part of the Chevrolet OnStar first responder training tour was develop a, a train the trainer curriculum. Uh, this weekend, in fact this afternoon, I'm going to conduct a two hour classroom session and that will be a train the trainer curriculum and all the folks who are in attendance, in attendance will go away with the package so that they can pay, take it back to their own departments and train their own personnel and hopefully take it to their county associations and things like that. Um, so today we'll do a, a classroom session and then we'll come out afterwards and we're going to cut this Chevrolet bolt up. The tools may not be compatible. They are not going to be the tools that can cut these new materials or pry on these new materials. They may not be able to do the extrication. So the firefighters need to understand that. Um, the municipalities need to understand that they may need to purchase new tools. So that's really what brings it together and that's what we're doing today. You know, when a fire department is evaluating hydraulic rescue tools, in addition to the vendor that they're looking of be looking at beginning a relationship. You know, a lot of things that a customer wants to consider really is sheer practical performance of the tools. NFPA 1936 compliancy, big, big buzzword in our industry. And that really is a safety standard that's built into the rescue tools for not only the operators, but the patients, as well as even bystanders. Speed, safety, uh, and training. You know, when you take a look at the overall HAL rescue systems and the entire Genesis rescue tool system line, whether it be spreaders, cutters, power units, combi tools, uh, we really, really are on the forefront of new product development, as well as getting these products out into the field and showing the end user how to not just open and close the tools, but properly and I stress the word properly, use these rescue tools to get out there and save lives.